a healthcare business podcast from the Coker Group that focuses on solutions to help healthcare organizations effectively navigate the changing healthcare industry landscape. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Coker. My name is Mark Reibolt, and I'm the host of the podcast. And on today's episode, um, we have a um, another episode that was done with one of our senior vice presidents, Amy Greeter, who's out of our Charlotte office. And today, Amy was actually wanted to do a recap with um, someone that she recently attended a conference with. Um, her name is Jamie Tynan. She's actually the director of strategy at Atrium Health, which is a giant um, healthcare system uh, based out of Charlotte. And um, Amy and Jamie recently attended the uh, Modern Healthcare Women's Leadership Conference, and um, which basically is just that it focuses on um, the kind of women uh, leadership roles in the healthcare industry. And um, it's one of those things that Amy has uh, been doing more and more research on over the last couple of years and actually has been presenting herself on. And so um, there were a lot of really good takeaways. It was actually the conference was in the in late July, actually in Chicago. And so Amy sat down with Jamie and they just kind of went through some of the key takeaways, um, some of the, you know, kind of aha moments, if you will. Um, that they picked up from the conference, which uh, I, I think this is this is one of those things that we at Coker are very passionate about um, highlighting not just um, uh, leadership principles and solutions in the healthcare industry, but even better kind of focusing those principles for women as they continue to take on more and more executive roles uh, with whether it's a hospital or health system, a medical group or any other healthcare organization. So um, we, we feel very strongly that this is a one of those topics that um, we, we want to continue to uh, highlight and focus on. And, and Amy's doing a great job taking charge of that. Um, also, this gave us an opportunity to kind of uh, do a little, put a little teaser out there for Amy, who's go- going to be presenting on um, the leadership roles in healthcare, leadership principles in healthcare, I guess I should say. Um, In the fall, um, she's going to be presenting at the annual MGMA conference, as well as the conference that's going to be put on by Becker's Healthcare. And um, and so you can find more information about that and, you know, all of our speaking and present presentations on our website at pokergroup.com. As always, you can find this episode as well as all of our episodes at coffeewithpoker.com. They're all listed there. You can listen to them directly. You can also download them via all the standard uh, podcast uh, forums out there. And we always love to get your feedback. So if you have questions about anything related to this episode, or if you'd like to hear us talk about or cover a topic in future episodes, please feel free to send us that feedback. Again, you can do that via our website. And again, you can find that at coffeewithpoker.com. Um, we hope you enjoy this interview with Amy and Jamie. And we look forward to uh, bringing this type of content to you all in future episodes. Thanks for listening. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee with Coker. As I'm sure you've noticed, you have a different host for today's episode. I am your producer, Jessica Combs, and I'm usually the one doing all the editing and not actually behind the microphone. So this is pretty exciting for me to get behind the mic. I've taken our podcast studio on the road to Charlotte, North Carolina, and I am here with Amy Greeter, who's been on our podcast before. She's a senior vice president at Coker, and then Jamie Tynan who's a director of strategy at Atrium Health. So welcome, ladies. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So recently, you all both attended the Modern Healthcare Women's Leadership Conference. And so that's kind of mostly what we want to talk about today, just kind of hear your experiences and how everything went. So I guess, you know, to start it off, Jamie, I know you were a speaker at the conference, so we'd love to hear about your experience. Like, how did you get selected? All the, you know, fun little details that you want to share. Yes, wonderful. First of all, it was such an amazing experience to be a panelist at the conference. I attended the Women Leaders in Healthcare Conference last year. That was my first time attending. And it was in Nashville and loved it. And one of my mentors, Gail Capazzalo, who is the retired chief strategy officer at Yale New Haven, is also on the advisory board for the conference. And she and I had developed a relationship all of last year through a program I was in with the American College of Healthcare Executives. Um, It was called the Thomas C. Dolan Executive Diversity Program. 
where we were matched up as mentor and mentee. And I had offhand had emailed her about the conference. I had said something like maybe one day I'd love to be a speaker or a panelist. And <laughs> next thing you know, two weeks later, I get an email saying that we'd love to have you as a panelist and we want you to talk about your career trajectory and your career path and how did you end up where you are. And I think it was interesting because I don't have a traditional healthcare background. I actually started my career in banking and then went to management consulting and then came to healthcare through that experience. And I think Gail wanted me to tell that story because there are a lot of women who are in non-traditional career paths that might want to transition to healthcare and they want to understand how that was done. So that was how I actually got selected. And like I said, sitting up there on the stage with very accomplished women executives uh, at very well-known health systems was amazing. And so uh, hopefully I'll have the opportunity to do it again. Hopefully maybe we'll have even Amy Greater as a, as a speaker or panelist as well. But it was a fantastic opportunity, great exposure, and I loved it. That's awesome. I think the way that Jamie got on the panel is one of the things that I absolutely love about her. She just took the initiative, you know, put an email out there and asked, hey, could I possibly, maybe, you know, how does that work? And I think your initiative is one of the things that is a hallmark of your success and why I think you were so great in sharing your thoughts on the panel. You did an excellent job. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, that's that's kind of a cool story. Do you want to give like a quick like Cliff Snow's version? I mean, I know you kind of like said a little bit. Is there anything more you wanted to say about maybe even like what you're doing now, like what your current position is and kind of how that all ties back in? Yeah, well, one of the, the things that we talked about as a panel was this idea of taking risks in your career. So I had started at Atrium Health in our strategic services group, which is more of your traditional strategic planning um, group. And then last year, there was a lot of momentum happening around consolidation and partnerships with other health systems. And another mentor of mine, uh, Carol Levin, who is the chief um, integration officer and also the chief of staff for the system, had mentioned she was standing up this brand new integration function. And I had expressed interest to her again, taking initiative and saying this would be something I was interested in. At the time, she wasn't ready to really build the team. But three months later, she said, hey, we're ready. Would you like to come over and do that work? And so in September of last year, I made that tr- transition from uh, you know corporate strategy over more into the integration function. And it's been amazing. And so that was a risk that I took seeing that I had a pretty decent career in strategic planning and now I was moving into a completely new space. We'd never stood up anything like this before. And now I'm being asked to help create something brand new, which is very exciting to me. I have a very strong entrepreneurial streak, I should say. Um, So that's what I do now. I actually help with um, bringing new systems on, doing the the back office and the clinical integration work. It's been very enriching and fulfilling. And um, I think it's going to have a lot of promise going forward as more systems start to think about partnerships as well. Yeah, that's really cool. I, that's an awesome opportunity for you. So I'm yeah. excited for you. That that's, I, I was very curious, just going to hear a little bit more about your background and your backstory. Um, all right. Well, maybe if we move on to the conference a little bit, uh, kind of other than Jamie's session, um, I'll throw this out for both of you. Which topic or presentation did you find the most beneficial and kind of what did you take away from it? I don't know, Amy, do you want to start? Well, it was a good disclaimer that you said other than Jamie's session, because of <laughs> course, Jamie's <laughs> session was my favorite. Aww. So would you put that aside? My second favorite then was a panel on how women leaders can set a new agenda for healthcare. So one of the panelists was Andrea Walsh, who is the president and CEO of Health Partners, which is the largest consumer-governed nonprofit healthcare organization in the nation. And Ms. Walsh shared her approach to how do you approach new initiatives with the following mantra, think big, start small, fail fast. And I loved this sentiment. And I think all three components are of critical importance. I love first the balancing of thinking big and starting small. So earlier in my career, I led a post-merger integration initiative between two faith-based health systems. And of course, they were two different faiths, which makes integration even more interesting. Um, And the magnitude of the change that was needed, operational changes, technology changes, supply chain challenges, even human resource changes, 
were so massive that it felt overwhelming at times. I knew that we had 11 months to get this integration completed, which to me meant we had around 330 days to make a difference. And I realized pretty quickly that we had thought big of bringing these two systems together, but really where we needed to start was small. And so breaking down what felt like absolutely enormous initiatives into manageable tasks, soliciting help when I needed it, which was all the time, day in, day out, every day. So focusing on both the work that we had to complete, as well as considering the work that we had already completed, helped me continue to push forward. So while I think I've appreciated the thinking big and starting small, Ms. Walsh's comments definitely underscore that. I think the failing fast is something that was a bigger takeaway for me, which is, you know, put yourself out there right away. Put that initiative on the fast track. If you're going to fail, have it be quick so that you can pick yourself up, pick the project up and keep moving on or figure out that this is not going to happen and then move on completely. But I think that was a little bit of a nugget from that panel that I took away, that concept of failing fast. I would also say that Ms. Walsh was on the panel, but Heather Rohan, who's the division president from HCA, Jenny Spisa, who's the CEO at UCLA, they shared some very real thoughts about leadership styles, about how do we lead in the era of value-based care? How do we approach policy changes as opportunities for growth and learning as opposed to challenges and hurdles that we have to overcome? I think that the genuine, real attitudes, the real thoughts, the learning from their professional experience that the women shared was so amazing. So all of the sessions were great, but I think that their panel, other than Jamie's, was my favorite. (laughs) (laughs) That's so interesting, that concept of failing fast. That's so true. And it's something I don't think a lot of us necessarily think about or like realize because I think we're so focused on like not failing at all but sometimes just to realize that just if you can do that that almost like makes a lesson in and of itself so that's pretty interesting absolutely I agree there are a lot of times I think looking back at my career it's like oh I wish I would have made that call a little bit quicker than I did so it's a good reminder yeah Jamie what about you what was your favorite I would say my favorite actually was the opening keynote. Um, So Dr. Lena Wen, who actually was going through a transition almost, I think, a week before the the conference, less than a week before the conference, Planned Parenthood had made some executive leadership decisions and um, she will be transitioning out of her role. And so I was intrigued to see if she, A, was going to continue with her speaking engagement, given that she was representing Planned Parenthood. But B, I think she just has such a fantastic story as a as a younger executive leading such a large organization. And what I loved about her presentation was she talked about the importance of reducing disparities in healthcare, which I'm personally passionate about. And she spoke about the disparities with maternal care, um, how your zip code affects you know, your, your lifespan and your access to healthcare, and what role executives in healthcare have to play to really be champions for diversity, inclusion, and helping to reduce those disparities. I love the message that she had around being an advocate, being vocal, not being passive. She had a wonderful message in addition to that about the the disparities in healthcare to even why she selected her profession, how she decided to to become a physician. Um, And then she also talked about, you know, being a practicing physician in Baltimore, which is a very challenging city, um, especially given the not just the demographics, but the access to healthcare and how you have to be really a, a leader that's championing diversity and inclusion. And so I loved a lot of the points that she made about that and how as executives, we can be you know supportive of those things. Yeah. And I think that is such a huge topic right now. I mean, trying to like just understand like not only like access to care, but just like the the differences between like certain locations and, you know, like where you live, like oh, all of that just plays in. And I think, you know, sometimes a lot of us don't necessarily like step, take a step back to kind of like realize that, especially like maybe on the consumer side, unless that's your, you know, like that's your situation. So I think that's like such an important topic right now to kind of be considering. I bet that was a very fascinating panel. It really was. And she did a fantastic job really 
making a call to action to the folks in the audience. And she specifically said, hey, this is what you need to do. You need to be advocates in your community. You need to push for better access to health care. And I, I just love the passion that she had. I mean, everyone, it was infectious. Everyone in the audience gave her a standing ovation at the end just because she was just such a rousing speaker. I, I literally have goosebumps, you know, right now just thinking about <laughs> yes. it because her call to action was so clear yes. about what was expected of everyone in attendance that we personally yes. need to be champions of an effort for change. Yes. I mean, when she got passion at the end and she raised her voice, I mean, it was thunderous yes. through the crowd, just, just what needed to be done and how impactful we as individuals, as healthcare executives, as women as moms and as daughters and as wives need to really do what's necessary to bring about change in our environment. It was, you're absolutely right. It was inspiring. Very much so. Well, this may be leading into our next question. So we may have covered it, but if not, what was your biggest aha moment from the conference? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Let me take a stab at it. I think my biggest aha, there was a session where they talked about some of the um, outcomes of a survey that they've done on women's leadership and specifically uh, gender equity in the workplace. And there were some statistics that they shared about how something like three out of four women still have had experienced some sort of, you know, negative experience at work with other colleagues based on their gender. And, you know, you hear about that and you think to yourself, are we still in an era and an age where women are experiencing these things in the workplace? And this survey pretty much said that we, what we are, we are still experiencing discrimination. We're still experiencing harassment. And again, the call to action as women to speak up, to continue to support one another, I think was just very impactful. So hearing some of the outcomes from that survey to me was the big aha moment that we still have a lot of work to do. First of all, like mind blowing yes. that this still exists in 2019. Um, and I think we probably both have had experiences throughout our career where we can say, you know, a little bit of me too. We've yes. had experiences where it's been, let's say, less than optimal. And the reality is that I would never want another woman to experience that. Absolutely. And so I realized that part of that is just me saying, you know, let's stop here and let's think about whether this is appropriate or not. And I know that's somewhat of a difficult conversation to have, but things are going to continue unless people take an active role to say that that's not okay. And so when we read statistics like that, it just underscores the need for us to put up our hand and say, you know, I've got some thoughts about that. And I don't know that I agree with what's happening here. So... For me, the biggest aha moment was one of the speakers uh, shared her perspective that the key to success was turning passion into purpose and purpose into action. Mm-hmm. And I was reflecting upon that after the conference, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice that you did something you were passionate about every day? Not everybody gets to do that, but what you can do is turn that passion into something that has a purpose. Find a way to unite your passion was something that you can be purposeful about and then take that purpose and act on it. And I, I really think that the key to success was right in terms of that vein of things. How do you turn your passion into purpose, your purpose into action? Because I think as long as we're continuing to act on things, we are going to find that the you know rolling stone isn't gathering any moss. We're going to find that there's progress to be made and adventures to be had. And so I was inspired by her comment. I thought that was a pretty great sentiment. Yeah, no, I think those are some great takeaways from the conference. And I mean, how do you think we could kind of up, take that and apply it maybe more specifically to like healthcare leadership? Any thoughts on where you might go with that with either either one? Yeah, so I have a quote that I like, and it's from Jack Welch, who is, I think, a, a wonderful person icon. But he is quoted as saying, before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. When you become a leader, success is all about growing others. And then a woman at the Modern Healthcare Women's Leader Conference said, we have two hands for a reason. One is to reach up and ask for more opportunities. And the second is to help pull up others. And I think both of those sentiments speak to the same point, which is you need to balance opportunities for creating opportunities for yourself and then creating opportunities for other people. And it strikes me that as we think about, you know, how do you apply these lessons in leadership? 
you have to consider it not only about what are you going to do, but also what are you going to do for others? What opportunities are you going to create? There are so many times in my career where I have gotten an opportunity simply because somebody has taken a chance on me. And I don't know that I always deserve that opportunity. Um, (laughs) I tried to make the most of it when I was presented with it, but simply having that opportunity to grow or be successful or try something new was, was critical to my own personal and professional development. So now it's about how do I create that same sense of opportunity for other people that are coming up along behind me? And how do I pave that path for that for them? How do I put my trust in them so that they can take opportunities and learn with them as well? No, I love that quote. I think that's a fantastic way to put it. I think the the lessons that I will take away from this conference, there was a Forbes article recently that talked about that there's power in the pack. And I really felt that this conference really embodied that spirit of wanting to be supportive of other women lock arms and do this together. And I think traditionally, many of us may have felt that there is limited success for women, where there was only if, if there was one promotion, only one what one of us could get it. And I think when you listen to all the panelists, they really try to embody that there's limitless success out there for women. And we really need to be supporting each other and championing one another. And that's what I loved about the conference. And I hope as a healthcare executive, I will continue to inspire my fellow female executives to do the same because I think if we support one another, we can definitely move the needle with, you know, how many women we do have in the C-suite and in leadership positions. So being able to just be that championing for each other, looking out for one another, um, celebrating each other's success, I think is is absolutely paramount to to moving the needle forward. Definitely. Yeah. No, that's I think that's very inspiring to me, especially as uh, someone who's Kind of still like working up in in her career as well, so it's uh, it's always nice to hear you know the inspirational comments and like have some good things to look forward to for me too as well. So, all right. So since we've talked a lot about this being kind of a women's leadership conference, what do you all really think think makes a great leader? Like, do you think there's differences in what makes a great female leader versus a great male leader, or you know, are, what are kind of like your thoughts on? just great leaders in general. So I actually talked about this on my panel a little bit, what makes a great leader. And one of the things that I think is so important, especially in today's environment, is that great leaders exude kindness. Kindness is probably one of the most underutilized skills in business today. And I think given that, especially in healthcare, and if you work in a hospital, you know, people bring their personal lives with them when they come in. Um, and they and they really need a leader that can be kind and can um, help them, coach them, mentor them, um, but always come from a spirit of making sure that you you understand where that person is coming from, that you are empathetic, that you can relate to them, that you can appreciate all of their gifts that they bring with them each and every day. So for me, kindness is the one thing that sets great leaders apart from good leaders. Someone that even when they're having a terrible day can still put kindness at the forefront. I love that. And I think there's an opportunity for women to be kind yet strong. Absolutely. And so how do you find that in your own style where you can be both things? Because kindness is not synonymous with weakness. Absolutely. And so I think it's absolutely possible to bring more kindness into our environment and still be a strong executive leader. Yep. So I would say one of the things that I have seen lately is a Harvard Business Review article that showed that women actually score higher than men in most leadership skills. And so they actually found that women were more effective in 84% of the capabilities that they typically measure. So these were things like takes initiative. So women had a score of 55.6, whereas men were at 48.2. Resilience, women were at 54.7 and men were at 49.3. Inspiring and motivating others. 53.9 53.9 for women and 49.7 for men. So I think the developing others, the inspiring and motivating others, I think that is a natural a tendency for women. I think yes. it's something that we do exceptionally well. And I think that that's something we should take pride in and that we should continue to foster and develop as a skill. The same article showed that there were areas where men ranked higher, developing strategic perspectives 
and professional or technical expertise. And I think that one of the questions I had was, is that an actual reflection of expertise or is that a perception of them as technically more strong? And I think one of the areas where women leaders get into trouble is by not putting themselves forward if they don't believe that they hit every check mark on a box. Mm-hmm. So you'll see that there's 10 capabilities for a new role that's opening. Women won't apply unless they hit 10 out of 10. You know, it's much more frequent for men to say, ah, I hit two of those. Let's go mm-hmm. ahead and apply for that. Mm-hmm. And that's why men, you know, put themselves out there for those opportunities and they get them because mm-hmm. they've raised their hand. They've taken the initiative. Um, that's why I'm so impressed by Jamie always taking oh. the initiative <laughs> because it's, it's by putting yourself out there that you're going to have a greater opportunity. And so I think as leaders, number one, we need to make sure that we're continuing to put our hand up for opportunities, even when we may feel like we don't check all the boxes. But number two, being aware of who are the other people that may be great for a role who may not have applied because they don't feel like they would get it or they don't feel like they have a perfect experiential background or whatever the case may be. And so making sure that we're aware of where others are and looking for people that may come and be great in a role that may not have considered themselves for that role yet. So I think that's a point of differentiation between good and great leaders is making sure that we look for identi- opportunities for ourselves and that we look to identify opportunities for others, even when they may not yet see it in themselves. I think that the Harvard Business Review article was so compelling, particularly to that point, women who don't believe that they are great leaders or that they have natural tendencies. These are natural, innate things that women just tend to do better than men, right? And so particularly for our younger leaders, I think reading that article is so absolutely powerful because there are some real strengths and some real skill sets that we have that we should be comfortable in advancing and moving things forward. So I just love that article. I love that we now have statistics that demonstrate what we already know and prove that. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think that is some great advice and some great points that you both have raised. Amy, I know you have a few conferences coming up in the fall. Mm -hmm. Do you you want to take a few minutes and kind of highlight where people can next hear you to speaking about leadership? Yes. So it's funny to speak at a lot of conferences. I'm not as lucky as Jamie. And sometimes I have to put out an abstract and then wait, you know, six to eight months. Uh, So I was delighted to find out after months and months of keeping my fingers crossed that I would be selected to find that I got picked for two different conferences in October. So I'm grateful that they are two speaking opportunities uh, at the national level and that they're both focused on inspired leadership. So a topic that I find near and dear to my heart, and so I'm excited to share. So the first is going to be at the Becker's HIT and Revenue Cycle Conference. It's going to be October 12th in Chicago, the Windy City. And I'm going to be speaking with Alan Veerling, who is a longstanding client, and I'm grateful to call him a friend as well. And we are going to be chatting about how to maximize human talent to maximize operating results. And then just a couple days later, October 15th, this time in New Orleans, I'll be speaking at the MGMA annual conference on how to get people out of their cave and into the sun. So at least it's a catchy title. Hopefully people will come and be uh, equally fascinated by the content that we have to share. But I'm thrilled and I would love anyone that's listening today to our podcast to join me be happy to meet you while I'm either in Chicago or New Orleans. So please reach out. Uh, It would be great to share. And maybe you can add something of value to my presentation as well. So I look forward to learning from all of you as well. (laughs) Thanks, Amy. Jamie, are you speaking any more this year? Do you have any other things, anything you'd like to highlight before we close out? You know, actually, this was um, my last speaking engagement this year. However, I do have a couple next year um, specifically with Becker's annual review, um, annual hospital meeting in April of next year. And then I also will be speaking at the Becker's um, IT and pharmacy conference in May as well. So looking forward to both of those experiences. It'll be nice to have a break to have some <laughs> downtime before I have to do any more um, presentations, but looking forward to those. 
Awesome. Great. Well, ladies, thank you. I think this has been a really fun conversation. I know I personally have learned a lot, so I'm sure our listeners have as well. Do you ladies have any final closing comments? I'll just extend some gratitude to Jamie for being here. So thanks for coming to our Cooker Charlotte office and sharing with us today. I am constantly inspired by you and grateful for you. So thank you. Well, thank you. I'm definitely humbled to be on this podcast. I think it's a fantastic thing that we're bringing insights from the conference to a broader audience. Um, and I look forward to hearing about all the wonderful things that Amy Greeter is going to achieve in her career as well. 